Yo, what is up, Squank? Hey. Oh, not much. What's up with you? Nothing much. Nothing much. Yeah, thanks for um, taking the time and chatting with your boy. No um, problem. Fellow slur, um, fellow fellow slur collector. Um, you know, got to do what you got to do, right? So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what's your relationship with, like, uh, the PP team still? Are you still, like, somewhat cool with them, or? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, okay, I'm cool. okay with them, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I'm fine with them now, I guess. Um, I haven't debated with them in a while, but, you know, it's whatever, so. I I'd be down to debate again if they really wanted me to, so. Yeah. True, true. Yeah, I'm considering. The, I like the topic for this Saturday. It's pretty interesting. It's like they want conservatives and and like lefties to like talk about their ideal America. Oh, okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, the camera not showing up. Golly gee. Hmm. Are you on OBS right now? On OBS, yeah. How'd you know? Uh, do you know how to do virtual camera? Um, is that what I do? Wait a second, actually. You may have to check your source also for your camera. That might be it too. Yeah. Source of the camera. Turn on camera. Okay. Okay. I'll exit out of OBS and we'll just do it this way. Are you sure? We can, you know, whatever you want. So I don't need you to no, be on camera. Good. It is all good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so pretty much like the biggest thing that I had um, that I was curious about, because I noticed like one time we were on it. Oh, there it goes. I noticed one time we were on a panel and someone was like concerned about like white on, I mean, black on white remarks, like racist remarks. Mm -hmm. They said it was like the same amount of harm and damage and badness as like white on black like racist marks mm. and like it seems like you were like very receptive to like that statement but i didn't understand why i didn't know if it was like a rhetorical thing where like you were just saying that just to like appease them or if you like actually felt that way no um, so um so the way that i view it is obviously uh obviously the slurs that are used towards black people are have so much more damage and have so much more history towards them but um, I think that if we're going to be consistent on the usage of slurs uh, on a platform, um, the only thing I would say is that the, the usage of slurs against white people then kind of undermine our arguments later on when we, uh, when we talk to, um, I guess, like, for example, like really far right people who think that, you know, there's a conspiracy to get rid of white people. Um, so it makes it much harder if, if we're not consistent about that. Um, and I don't, I don't think like that they're equivalent in any way. I do think that some people do find some hurt in them. And I, I don't know, the few times that I've heard it in person, um, have always been in like reference to like, don't ever say that around, you know, certain people, you know? So, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if I agree. I, I just don't, it's tough for me to agree with that but like rhetorically uh -huh. i'm trying to find the spot of converting people um so i have to acknowledge that people feel a certain type of way about like certain rhetoric like when when save like a black person like called some white like some white person like a honky or something i i think one of my core beliefs is that i don't believe that's the same amount of harm just systemically um just it, it'd be like someone that's like bald making fun of someone with hair or it'd be like yeah. someone that's like tall, but like a short person, I'd say. That's how I explained it to, um, not Radical Coder, who's the other guy? In a long day. I think Endless. Um, okay. They had kind of disagreements about that. But like, so for you, you actually believe that it's not like a rhetorical strategy just to, just working on conversions and like appeasing others. I think it's more, if, so I think it's more effective if I'm talking with people um so here's the thing like uh, i think if i'm gonna 
so I'm somebody who I don't really care if I get called anything, you know, at least like for me, when when somebody calls me something, um, I know that that person's an idiot, right? If they can't conduct themselves in how normal social human beings conduct themselves, then at least I know that they're a fucking idiot. Um, but when it comes to like a platform like Twitch, uh, um, policing speech, if if they're going to police the speech um, towards people of color, then I think it is consistent, um, uh, you know, for them to do it for towards people who are white as well, just because um, uh, otherwise, um, then we start drawing these arbitrary lines, right? What's allowed and what isn't allowed. And then um, when it comes to like when people actually use words with with malice and actually use them to hurt people based on on characteristics that they can't control, um, then it becomes super gray and, it, and it's hard for us to really know, right? So we do have to draw some hard lines somewhere. Um, so even if I don't think that the C word is anywhere near the N word or anywhere near um, a variety of other words, um, sorry, excuse me. Um, I, That's all I, I get. I do it all the time. <laughs> um, so even if I don't think it's anywhere equivalent, I think it just helps in consistency. And I think um, another thing that uh, I think about is like when when you are inevitably going to be arguing against like a super far right person who thinks that like the Jews are trying to replace them um, and and you say that like and, and let's say they pull out an argument. Well, look at Twitch like Twitch is being um twitch is, is being so vigilant about the speech used against people of color but they don't care about the the speech used towards white people so what do you say to that and then that would be something i'd have to concede on right so um so i don't know i think i just do it for consistency um even if i don't think that it's it's equivalent in any way so and it also you know hassan the biggest political streamer saying those words and then doubling doubling down on it doesn't help any of us you know when we're arguing with people so yeah yeah but i mean in private uh, and and honestly even if there were a platform out there where i could just like you know um people could say whatever they want like i wouldn't mind that um and in private like you know i i don't care uh what people do um, but if it's a platform and it's a business that is going to kick people off based off of language, there has to be a hard line and there has to be consistency. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I see what you're saying with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. Hassan, Hassan's use of the C word. I like white people using the C word. I, I really like slur reclamation. I think that's fucking tight. Yeah, um, I think so too. Saying, I, I don't think I don't think that expands to Hassan using that. Voss can say it. His, his family. <laughs> on, on that, yeah, yeah. Um, interesting, interesting. Um, so you've seen that I was like the most effective um, with people. Yeah, because like being a political revoke, seeing so many like people that are like actually concerned about the little Timmy thing, like that that bothers me. Like I go to bed sometimes and I think about how to like get these people off that fucking ledge because that's a dark path yeah it can lead to some like fucking stupid ass consequences consequentially for it um, one thing i would recommend is it how long have you been interacting with that crew 2020 plus sorry since 2020 uh, not specifically pretty crew book but i um a little bit about me i've done in-person things so where i live in like central florida it's fucking florida is desantis trump territory yeah um so during 2020 there's a lot of like in-person like pro-trump events and like me and a few other people would go yeah. and try to do ah hey low in theory what's up dog just talking about a conversation it was low in theory i had the conversation with um but mm -hmm. would go like to in-person events with like other activists in the area mm -hmm. um and talk to people um and see if i can just deconvert people or at least like put seeds of doubt in people's minds about yeah Trumpism and things like that. Some people have certain ideas. Um, some yeah. people think certain things about race relations and about George Floyd and shit. Yeah. Um, some people are like harder cases than others. But there are people like legitimately worried about things like the Great Replacement. Yeah. Um, they don't know that that's what it's called. They they think that it's such a subtle thing because Tucker Carlson showed it to them. Um, yeah. And they don't really they don't really think about it like that. So. It's tough for me to like figure out like rhetorical strategies. I can kind of get people to 
not be so worried about that. Um, but the thing about fear is that it's not it's not something that people rationally feel a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, so you have to deal with like a lot of objections, and then you have to make sure people are honest and upfront about their objections which yeah some people have varying degrees of being honest about their true objections like say like oh i don't want to eat through this restaurant and they'd be like and they'll say like oh i don't like the soda machine but like really just don't like the food that's being presented or how the restaurant smells or yeah so you yeah. gotta like dig into the deeper issues yeah sometimes they can't tell you the deeper issues but um that's how it is um i'm getting better at it um, yeah. i used to be really shitty about it um same <laughs> online's a lot different <laughs> online's a lot different than in person they're different yeah. factors. Um, so the one thing I would say about online people is, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but online people, especially people who spend a lot of time online, are way more radical, at least from my experience, than you know a lot of the people in person. Um, and one thing that you should just always keep reminding yourself is that that is not the norm. Because when I first started doing this and I would interact with, I would interact with like straight up like Nazis on a regular basis. I'd be in like actual Nazi discords, like arguing with people. Like it is super easy to start like questioning your reality and start thinking like, how many people actually think this, right? So, um, and, and that can burn you out. Like <laughs> that can burn you out so quickly if you start thinking like, because you interact with like, these people so often, like it, it's human nature for you to start thinking like, this is the norm, you know? This is like, all these people are like this. They hate me. Like, um, so yeah, I guess that's that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm sure you already are, uh, you know, aware of it, but yeah. <laughs> it doesn't uh, weigh me down. Like people yeah. saying- you call me like the n-word and shit does not it really okay <laughs> that that's shit good does not yeah. burden me yeah, yeah yeah no i um that would that would fucking kill me if it did oh my gosh yeah um yeah there's there... i'm saying this but there was there was a time where i was like bike riding when i was like 16 and yeah. like these two like fat like rednecky dudes it looks like Larry the Cable Guy threw like rocks and batteries at me and called me the N-word. Oh my god that, dude. like really yeah that really upset me because i was like my yeah. favorite place to go was like this public park um it kind of fucked with me but then like i realized they're on that bike ride i was like yo i can't let the shit like get me down to fuck my day up um yeah so you can't let don't... it run your life yeah 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 no like when dingo called me the n-word i was like i i was laughing during that clip i'm pretty sure just because like that shit does not bother me i don't think it yeah. bothers you too much either it's just it that doesn't yeah. what bothers me is what people do when they get behind a voting booth who they yeah. vote for um yeah. and the actions that they take like activism wise um, yeah. that bothers me. Like the word shit, not so much. Um, Unless it's a smart to... person, then I don't really care. You know, like Dingo is not the smartest person in the world. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, what a character he is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that crowd is like very interesting. I, I'm not doing the best job and I feel like I do. I can do a better job with things like the little Timmy question. Things like that. Um, well, um, I try to pose it. Like I take their arguments a lot of the time and i'll appropriate a, a little bit of their argument and use it in my favor um um don't tell anybody that but um so <laughs> um I, I don't know i guess like what what are your biggest concerns with the little timmy argument um there's this book that a lot of marketers read called i think it's called thinking fast and slow mm -hmm. um, and in this like book it like kind of introduces like a concept called anchoring mm -hmm. um let's let, let me connect this okay so with anchoring it's like say you ask two different groups of people how tall is redwood and the first question you ask the first group you ask hey is it redwood 800 feet tall or is it higher than that yeah um, and then the second group you ask hey how tall is a redwood tree they're going to give yeah. you different answers the first group because you said 800 feet tall it's going to be in that ballpark of 800 feet yeah and then like that second group it's going to be all over the place because you didn't put an anchor there so when we talk about the little timmy question and things like that Team words like Lowen Theory said. I'm sorry, um, you cut you cut out for a second. Can can you repeat what sorry. you were saying? So when we when we deal with things like the little Timmy question, like there's a lot of anchoring in that statement. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, what happened to little Timmy? Um, all these bad things that happened, fear of replacement, fear of revenge. Um, so there's like so many different anchors that say, okay, you're fucked if you're a white person once you become a minority in the United States. Yeah. Um, so having like kind of like on the wrong foot to begin with when taking on that question. So it's tough for me to like kind of like remove all the anchoring points and all the hooks 
and I haven't figured out like the master strategy of doing it just yet. Um, mm. Just recognize how many hooks are in there, or maybe there are more than what I'm seeing. But there's mm. a fuck ton in there. Um, I guess what is your goal? Because for me, when I argue with these people, my goal is never is never changing the mind of that person. It's more about sowing the seeds of doubt in the audience, and the audience are the ones who start changing when they see like their representative is not doing a good job with their argument. Um, yeah, that's a good that's a good goal. That's yeah. a lot more achievable than like converting people because a lot of these people don't want to be converted. And yeah, they won't. Just like how I said earlier, where they're like hangups that they have that they don't even want to talk about. Yeah. Or that they that they might even be cognizant of. Yeah. Um, it's the same way. So. Yeah. I guess clearing out with like a better expectation is probably a much healthier thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because honestly, um, changing the mind of of somebody who's so dead set like Dingo is it's just not going to happen. I know realistically, um, he doesn't respect me or you enough to ever give our our opinions any merit. And the people who he does respect um, are people who affirm his view of the world. So, yeah. yeah. Um, he does respect the bull. Um. Yeah, but they have a lot of teenagers in the audience. Yeah, the the teenagers. Yeah, that's who I aim for. <laughs> like the the people who don't know better, who who could be swayed still. Um, because you know, a lot of these people, um, a lot of like even Nazis, like are indoctrinated from a teenage age. You know, so it's re it's really sad to see. So I I see what you're saying, especially with that. Um, I think that. Yeah, just sowing the seeds of doubt, making the other person who's arguing their ar argument um, fall apart in real time. I think that's good at sowing seeds of doubt. I know that overnight it doesn't happen, but like uh, I know that it, it can happen. You know, I know that people will come over to the other side. So it just takes time. Um, as far as like the little Timmy argument, I I guess I kind of just follow what they say um, and try to logically like put holes in it. So I think the last time I talked to Mio, um, I made the point that I have more in common with um, a black or a white person in America than I ever will with somebody in India, right? Um, so that. just because, yeah, just because, um, just because we are different um, in how w we appear doesn't mean that we don't share culture, right? I share way more culture with you. I share way more culture with Mio. Um, so that that is one argument I use. Um, Mio would probably counter that with like, um, no, you don't like in some stupid shit um, where it doesn't even make sense. He would just deny it completely. Um, another thing that I also do is I... I try to get them to define uh, what white culture is, right? What specifically is white culture? And how is that different from somebody who shares the same region, right? So like there's like New York culture, right? And New York culture, you know, or like if you live in New York City, like you're probably going to be, you're going to probably share things. They're going to be overlapping aspects um, with a lot of the people around you. Um or like I'm from the DC area. Um, a lot of the things that I do, even the way that I speak is shared with a lot of the people in my area. Um, so it, it isn't really based so much on um, race. It's really based on region. And even when you look at sure. shared, yeah, shared culture, I mean, like Dingo couldn't answer that. He couldn't answer what white people share. Uh, essentially what what is white culture yeah because he tried to say well um well white people uh they own dogs like that was one that was really strange um <laughs> <What>? <laughs> um i'd have to go through my thing again but but in trying to get them to hone in on what white culture exactly is is probably the easiest way to kind of poke holes in their argument because they they really can't um uh, I know one thing they claim is they claim that they made everything. That's one that like that one's that's really annoying too yeah. to argue because the I don't know if you've ever had it. You you probably have experienced it where somebody's like, oh, you're just exploit. Yeah. yeah, we built the society you live in. You don't deserve to to benefit off of the off of the um the triumphs of white society or whatever you know you're culturally you're appropriating and all that and that's 
that one's kind of frustrating to argue with because even if I bring up ancient societies that were ahead of European societies, they'll say, well, those people were really white, right? If I bring up anything in India, it's like people back then in that region were white. So um, there's like a revisionist history there and I'm still kind of figuring out that one. But probably I would say um, talking about regions, talking about shared cultures, um, and then asking them to define very specifically what white culture is, um, is, is probably good. And if they can, um, if they can bring up like, if they can bring up European culture, um, another thing is to ask them like what they consider white. Um, because a lot of people don't consider Italians white. Um, uh, there are people in, yeah, there are people in Italy who are, who are darker skinned, um, they're, um, if you ask them to define what Asian culture is, they're, they can't define that. I, the one thing that Dingo said that was honor. They have an honor-based uh, <laughs> culture. I'm like, what? <laughs> this sounds like a Disney movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. So those are kind of the things I aim for. Uh, they really can't define it. And even like, I, I, you know, you're going to probably like raise your eyebrows at this, but Lauren Southern actually made a really good point in that the, you know, f the French and the Turkish people, um, they, uh, they will bring up the croissant as something that their culture owns. Um, and they're both right because the croissant was inspired by like the Islamic um uh, moon and the star right um but it is like a yeah it's like a, a french dish or a french pastry so there are a lot of cultures that will argue with each other over um over who owns something and when you go back far enough there's everything is influenced by everything else so yeah okay all right um shit might have to make another turn conversation wise then because i never you brought up the Italian and German and Irish thing before, but I never hold people's feet to the fire on that. Yeah. Like when you're in a big panel getting dogpiled, then, like, someone's mm -hmm. going to jump in and, like, run coverage without even knowing that they're running coverage. Yeah. Someone else. Um, it's kind of annoying, so I need to figure out how to manage that. Maybe it's it's not even manageable. Who knows? Um, low in theories in my chat, he's asking if he can come on for a second. Sure, yeah. Oh, let's add him to the call. Find him. Now I'm going to have am to figure I, out how to add people to calls. Am I friends with him? I don't think I am friends with him on Discord. There's like a little plus button on uh in our group call. And it says add friends to DM. It's right next to the pin button. This is embarrassing. Okay, one second. Huh? Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, how do I not know this? Um... Uh, let me see if I can screenshot. Wow, I'm a boomer. Nah, that's Holy cool. Shit. Wait, oh no, I can't find it. Wait, uh... <laughs> okay, now here it is. Okay. <laughs> so, it, it's... Here, I'll screenshot it. Are you friends with him on Discord? What's about on Discord? Um... I know about the server. Hmm... Low in theory, if he if he has his Discord tag, I can add him. Oh. Let's figure out what I did wrong. Or or if he wants to add me as a friend, um it's uh Stardust um zero 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 one. Uh, I thought I had him as a friend, but I don't see him on my list here. He goes by a different name on Discord. Just uh, like me, how I, how I should be doing bars and joysticks when I'm Taj John on Discord. <laughs> All right, one second. Um, found him. Great group. Hello? Oh, there we go. I don't know Okay. 
Hello? Hey. Oh, there you Hey, what's up? Um, I was expected to pop on so quickly. If y'all give me like five minutes, I'm gonna uh, hop on my computer and uh, I'll. Okay. No problem. Right, I might I might change subjects really quickly because I I'm curious about Sardis's take on another thing. Oh, that's fine. I'll be listening in. Give me like five minutes. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, I don't know if you've encountered any black supremacists online yet. I have. Uh, the you ones have? that I've, the ones that I've encountered though are people in the UK. Um, and, um, the, uh, the ethno nationalists in the UK or something else, I still haven't figured out completely how to deal with them yet. Yeah. 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 I, it's tough. It's tough. Um, what are spaces for some reason is like rife with them right now. There's so many of them and it used mm -hmm. to be really benign. Now it's getting mm -hmm. more organized. Like, um, you know how the same way that like Nick Fuentes has like, mm -hmm. I want to use the word lieutenant lieutenants and generals. Mm -hmm. It sounds really fucking goofy when I say that for Nick Fuentes. I feel like Tariq Nasheed has that for the same way, and Dr. Umar has that the same way, where there are people that are, like, close to him or in his, like, cabal of, like, weird followers mm -hmm. and, like, spread these, like, idiotic ideas online. Um, I feel like, because their arguments are, like, really charismatic. Say if you're, like, someone that's in a, like, um, in a marginalized group and life is just, like, really shitty for you, and you know that life's really shitty because you're in a marginalized group or partly because you're in a marginalized group. It plays some factor in the shittiness of your life. And, like, when people say things like, hey, we were the first Americans or, like, hey, we're, like, we're the alpha humans or whatever like that, um, that's really appealing. Um, if you just, like, don't know and also if you're just, like, open to things like that. The same way that people, like, listen to, like, things like astrology and they're like, oh, shit, I'm a Virgo, so I'm destined to do this, this and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out ways to break through it because, like, the thing about racial separatist arguments is that they don't really adhere to reality too much. Um, yeah. It's hard to get people... Maybe it's not my job to do. I don't know. I should probably dust my shoes with this. But I was curious if you had, like, any sort of perspectives on that or insights. Uh, I have to think about that one, and I might have to revisit, like, the people that I've talked to who deal with that on a daily basis. Um, I could try to do that and maybe... Um, maybe like get back to you on that. Um, I, I assume that it's, it's much like white nationalists is probably coming from a place of pain um, uh, in a pain uh, in a place of ostr ostracization. Um, so I guess um, I would, I mean, you could just do the same argument, right? Like what is, what is, blank culture right um yeah. and and try to poke, poke holes in that i guess um like what's the what's the difference between you um versus because probably what they're thinking is not too different right what's the difference between like um an indian person who lives in india and a person indian person who lives in america like there's going to be a world's difference there you know um my values are just going to be different um the how much um advancement I want for women is is going to be different right um uh so I guess I would I would try to poke holes in that like what what specifically do you think is unique that we're not that we can't do from a mixed society I guess so yeah, yeah. it's probably the closest I can uh, to an answer I can give to you right now I, oh, I haven't awesome. yeah yeah I know yeah. like um it's kind of like a new thing that popped up on my radar probably less than a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, there are people in my life that I've met through like different things in life that um, legitimately have views similar to this. I just didn't know how many people would be in these Twitter spaces. Mm -hmm. Like earlier today, there is one about black Americans like being against immigrants. And I was like, what the fuck is this? You know, yeah. um, not saying that everybody in that 1600 person space like had those opinions because they're pretty... Probably a lot of people like me who thought these ideas were like really fucking dumb, yeah, and really stupid. Um, but just like seeing that in some way that can become a problem, not as big as like I I think white nationalism can be a problem. Um, better America, but I mean, I'll be honest with you. I be I'll be honest like with you. It, it it um uh it for me those like that would be. When I first entered white nationalist spaces and tried arguing with people, it was very scary. 
You know, it's very scary because they pull out like the bell curve. They pull out race realism. They pull out everything under the sun. And um, and then some. if you don't know enough of it, if you don't know enough of the material, like you start thinking, oh, my God, am I am I really like defective? Like, am I am I the defective human being? <laughs> you think maybe for just a moment, you know, and and you think like, um, uh, I don't know. For me, also, another thing that that is very common is they try to I don't know if they do this to you. They probably do it to you. But they they um, for me, they'll try to undermine my my place as a woman, even um, by using my race, you know, they, they they use your race in a way to also like make you feel like you're less of a woman, you're ugly, you know, you're like um, you're disgusting and you're not you're never going to be like a like the ideal woman and all of that. And um, so it's a, it's really um, it's really scary if you don't know it, how to ground yourself. Um, uh, so with like uh, I'm not sure. I would, again, have to really look into that. But I'm assuming that they have other similar arguments like, oh, you know, um, historically, um, uh, white societies have always colonized um, people of color, all of that, um, which is like similar to the race, not race, uh, to the white supremacist argument of, oh, white people made everything. What have other cultures ever done? You know, um, colonization, um, uh, you know, one of the funniest lines, colonization, um, stop people from being savages and all of that, um, which is like ridiculous. But I guess, um, uh, I guess looking at like great societies that have been historically mixed, um, you know, uh, looking at um, pieces of of like um, like the the croissant was such a good example. I can't believe I got an argument from Lauren Southern on this, but it was such a good argument. Um, yeah, um, just looking at, at at how art and and even like um, clothing has been inspired by like the collaboration of different cultures. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. What you're saying. Yeah, this, this is kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Yeah, um, things like things like food and art and music and clothing; those are like so much higher on people's needs. But I feel like when talking to at least people, I feel like are legitimately like just like super poor and live super shitty like horrible lives um that they want to like believe these things um just the same way i don't know if if you've done like homeless outreach or spoken to homeless people a Mm -hmm. lot of them have these weird ass beliefs like there's like this homeless like single mother that i help out Mm -hmm. every now and then um and she will say things like yeah i'm actually a ninja i have ninja powers oh the stars are telling me blah 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 i can read minds and i'm like sometimes like the adherence to like she might just be playing crazy but I feel like sometimes when people have such shitty lives, they kind of like start imagining different things in their lives. It's hard to break people out of that. Um, it is. Yeah. It's really sad. It's like this really morbid book that, that I heard of. Um, it's like a world war two book kind of, but not really about like this world war two guy. He got like everything blown off from a bomb. Like his, all, his limbs are blown off. His dick was blown off. His like fucking eyes and, and ears are blown off. So he couldn't hear or see. So he just lived in like for the rest of the time he was on a tube until he died. He was like, living in a fantasy world um I feel like it's like that but in like more subtle of a way for a lot of people that are like racial supremacists um it's just yeah well another so common like thing is that they probably think that they are like elites right that are conspiring against them right um for yeah. white nationalists it's it's like the jewish people for some, I, I think for some black supremacists, it's also the Same Jewish thing, people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, You'd be so. surprised how similar their arguments are, just like color change. Yeah. yeah I've, known, I've met a black nationalist one time, and he was like, yeah, man, black babies are smarter, and black people are stronger, and black people are just like faster to think about things. And I'm like, I'm mm-hmm. like bro, what the fuck are you saying, dog? Like, um, yeah. He's not. He's in no way to the majority of, of black people, but just for the yeah. Audience. No, I I know. I know that the people that we're talking to are like people who are hurt and people who have um, fled to these spaces because they are that hurt. I guess so. Yeah. Lewin, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, I was I was just listening in just a little bit. Um, I, that's actually really interesting because um, you know, it's 
I actually, as I think about it, wasn't there just something recently in the in the um, in the Twitter sphere where like um, a whole bunch of the, like the black um, I think the Black Hammer of God or something like that. Those guys, oh, Gazi. Gazi, yeah, Gazi, and they were like trying to team up with the uh, was it the Proud Gavin. Boys or something like that. They did an interview. Uh, yeah, they did a panel yeah. together. That was something. Gavin was, was like weird. so drunk. He oh. like he just like started vomiting like off camera in the middle of the yeah. panel. <laughs> I had I had such bad secondhand embarrassment for that guy. Oh my that god! Panel. Oh god! It was so yeah. embarrassing. Um, have you but- Gazi like Gazi's a, his pet dog? Like, have you noticed that that dynamic? It feels really weird to me. I thought of Gazi's it more like-, like a wife. Like Gazi's like they're cheering him on while he's vomiting. Like, yeah, Ka- Kamala, is that you? I'm like, what? What are you? What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that that was yeah that was that was nuts um yeah that whole situation but um i was uh listening to you guys uh having a little bit of conversation about the little timmy question um, mm. um how many of us have um interacted with uh with mio um on a politically revoked channel before they got I moved have. you have, have yeah. yeah yeah oh we all have okay so we all have <laughs> Um, you know, I was like, I've been rewatching the debates that he's had over this subject. Uh, obviously, Destiny mm-hmm. was the most, uh, what's the one for? He was the most prepared and most able to kind of deal with those arguments. But I think that he missed like a really big step, honestly, probably because he wasn't taking it, taking it seriously. Um, Mio's like main um, point was to say that like uh, black people will never have the same story um, or Hispanic people won't have the same story um as uh as white people in the country and I, I had to really think about it for a second I'm like there are a lot of like black people in this country that have white ancestry so wouldn't they i mean honestly it's kind of sounds like he should be advocating for us too mm-hmm. what do you guys think about that oh yeah, yeah. I, I think the, i think the one drop rule kind of plays kind of kind of a bit in there I yeah. think mm-hmm. the majority of Black Americans have a white ancestor that was probably a slave owner at some point. That's yeah, all. It, it, that's it, actually another thing that I I brought I like to bring up with them is, you know, um, how, uh, like how do you determine after a certain point who is white and who is black? And usually, because they don't want to admit that they are believing in the one drops theory, you kind of have to walk them down to admitting mm-hmm. it some way. Um, and yeah, that, that is a good one. Um, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, I think that's like kind of what became our argument last time I was, um, talking to Mio it basically was, um, when everybody's mixed, um, th- they're like, there's not going to be, uh, like, there's not going to be a way for anybody to be condemning anybody else. So this idea that little Timmy is going to be bullied, like in, in this future mixed society, um, mm-hmm. He's probably going to be bullied for for having a shitty personality <laughs> rather than his, you know. Um, or but he it, just really won't care. Yeah, or he won't. And yeah. br- you know, brutality or, I mean, happens regardless of of whether uh, mm-hmm. society is homogenous or not. Like uh, India's caste system is a great example of that. They did they they still. I mean, sure, you can see some colorism for sure, but like it is a bunch of people who are you know pretty much ethnically the same who are horrible mm-hmm. to each other based on a predetermined um predetermined title that they're given um that they were born into right um and especially the untouchables like they're just they're born into that and the idea is that they're never they're so they're so um they're so low they've done something so bad in their past life that they will never ha- will be able to regain like karma to um be born into anything better right and that's like fucked up you know so I, yeah. I have a question actually as I think about it. What is yeah. the caste system like in India? Is it like is there like some colorism in there as well? Um there I think um, there is colorism in in India um for sure just based on like the you know um they're fair and lovely like this cream that you could um put on to lighten your skin. But when it comes to like the caste system mm. itself, it's basically based on on who your parents are and um your if you're born into a family that's untouchable, then you're just an untouchable for life, right? Um, if you're born into like a Brahmin family, you're a Brahmin until you die, right? So, um, and it's not even, it, yeah, I don't know. It's not even something that you can work out of um, in your in your lifetime. Um, it, you live and you die 
So what about people? What about people that um that are that live in India but are like of like um of like um what sort of I'm not trying to say Asian but like of like Chinese descent? Yeah, like that, uh, do, do they do they fit somewhere in there? I'm not really sure the technicalities of it because my family is Muslim, so so we don't mm -hmm. really fall into that system. But okay. um, but there, I think uh, even yeah, even then like. I don't know. You don't really need an excuse, um, even like skin color, to to justify br like being brutal to people, being horrible to people, because people have been doing that without mm. that for the longest time. So, interesting. Um, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've I've never I've never actually read up on it, but I just found out that there's like a I guess a really large like Chinese population within India mm -hmm. that I'm just now finding out about, and I I had no idea that was a thing. I was just wondering how they fit into the caste system there. I mean, are they considered like more on the higher echelon of things or are they more just kind of, they just kind of fall where they may? Yeah, I'm I'm really not sure. I think it's just, it comes down to, mm -hmm. yeah, it just comes down to like, for them, they don't fall into that system. So I don't know um, what happens really. Okay. Uh, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. All right, I'm not going to hold you guys for so much longer. We're getting close to the, to the uh, 40 minute mark, man. Gotta hit the young kids. Uh -huh. hey, you're we're all on the Eastern Seaboard, right? Or except for you. We're all what? We're all on like Eastern time, right? Like I'm yeah. I'm Florida. I'm an island boy. Oh no, I'm I'm in uh I'm in central time. Oh you're a central uh, okay. timer, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Well, so I just want to pop How old are oh, you when you had sweet tea for the first time? Because I know up north they don't really have sweet tea <laughs> like that. They just <laughs> eat sweet tea. Yeah. Um, cool. This has been really cool. And you know, it's, it's so cool to like, um, to like be able to talk to other people in this space who are POC. Um, it, it, you know, it's just, it's kind of rare to come by. And I think we do face like a unique issue, especially since people dehumanize us while they're talking to us while they're seeing our faces. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Can I just say you handle yourself really well with uh, Dingo? I, oh, I thank was, you. Yeah, I, I was, I was really, I'll say I was proud, but like I was like, yeah, she got it. You understand? Know, I appreciate so that. You yeah. know what it is? So that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, the what it is is that people like Dingo are, or what really anybody in that crowd, they're trying to make an example out of you by getting you emotional, mm -hmm. like a woman, or getting you emotional, like you know those those dirty POCs. You know they're always they're they're savages, right? And so when you're mm -hmm. able to like maintain your cool and actually make Dingo lose his shit, then everybody gets mad at him. So yeah, it's super <laughs> funny. Yeah. Oh, it's so yeah. funny when that happens. Yeah. 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 And, you know, well, the best way, I think, is, uh, again, I would just say start appropriating their arguments against them. Like, that. that is, like, such a stun lock, I've learned. Um, so, yeah. I might, I, might, I might have to first see, I might have to have you expand on that a little bit more, just kind of, I'd be interested to see how that would work in, like, real life. Yeah. Um, I, I can give a real. quick example um, uh, oh, right I love now. That. Go ahead. Yeah, last time I was on Killstream, I was arguing against this guy named John Fashcroft, and one thing that he said was that black people are so much more violent than um, than white people. So that's why we need to separate. So I asked him, okay, well, men commit 80% of all violent crimes in America. So maybe it's not so much about um, about ethnic group, right? Or ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, or race. Maybe, maybe it's more about, maybe we just need to separate men and women. And then he said, well, no, it's, it's in men's nature to be brutal and to be violent. So then I asked him, you know, well, you were just saying a minute ago that black men are or are committing more crime. I mean, and, the, and this is not even based in fact, right? But I'm just going with mm -hmm. his logic. So are you telling me that black men are better men than white men? And then that got him really fucking mad. <laughs> so that's, oh, that's a good that is a good one. Yeah, that's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. next yeah. level. I would yeah, that's yeah. good. That's some good shit. Yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know if I can curse. Can I curse? Yeah, you can curse. Yeah. Yeah, I curse oh, all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, that that's a good one. Yeah. That is a good one. Yeah. All right. Um, well, uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna dip out. I just wanted to yeah. say hi. Obviously, um, I, I, I was popping in. I was really interested in the little Timmy question, but you guys kind of got past it by the time I could uh, pop on. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, but, uh, well, we should do this again. We should do this um, again. Yeah, like, I would, 
We uh, we bring oh. up all the POC creators in one call and like have a chat or something. That would be super cool, you know? Yeah, uh, so. me and Tosh are trying to channel? start something like that. Yeah, me and Tosh trying to start something like that. Um, well, I don't know if he's still into it, but yeah, I was like, I'm still down. I got my I got a new microphone, so I'm less fucked in the in the audio department. Okay, all right. Yeah, I was I was gonna try to call it like the barbershop, oh. something along those lines. Hell yeah, I, I that, thought that sounds was cool. so cool. Yeah, I thought it was a good idea. Yeah, um, but we yeah, could get just, a. I mean. It, I could hit up like also like Destiny if you start if you guys start doing that and see if he'd be interested in talking because I'm sure he'd he could like brainstorm with us on ways to handle this from our perspective I guess yeah, you know? absolutely I think that would yeah. be cool um, yeah I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try to I think I had you as a friend on Discord at some point but I don't think I yeah. have you anymore or maybe you oh got a new we're one. friends yeah we're friends I didn't realize you were under a different name on Discord so. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Just. Uh, um. I would love to pop on at some point. Um. Or if yeah. you have. Or if you have a panel in the future. So I definitely yeah, want to sure. get back out there. Yeah. yeah. But um. Yeah. Either way, y'all. Y'all have a good night. Thanks. You too. Have a good one. Hello. Thanks for having me, guys. So. This is. And thank you so much for your time, Stardust. Appreciate. Yeah. It. Of course. Bye. Have a good rest of your night. Huh. See ya. Peace. Um. Hello. Let's see. That was so much fun. I love that. That was amazing. <laughs>